These are some tips on uh, getting the Apprentice 15E ready to fly in the water. Um, I'm not a uh, experienced uh, RC pilot. Um, I've got about 500 hours in planes and ultralights and floats, but this is the first time I had an RC airplane and and um, got pretty good flying the Apprentice on wheels, and so I've decided I'm going to try flying it on the floats. And uh, I made a couple modifications to get more rudder authority, and then also. Um, had heard that you know it can you can get some water in it while it's on the flying on the water, and uh, so I just made some very simple waterproofing steps, which I'll show you. But um, first of all, the modifications for I did was I took a 256 rod, went to the hobby shop and got a 256 rod, and am running that from the rudder horn down to the nose wheel, and uh, what I'm using for a connector there. It's one of these connectors made by Great Plains, recommended by my hobby shop. They're really pretty handy. They're very easy to adjust. They've got a little set screw in the top. You can see where the, the hole where the control rod goes through. And there's a little donut on the bottom that just that you stick on there. That's how it stays on the control horn. You will want to take the control horn off. Just take this screw out to be able to put this one on. Okay. Um, so making this uh, a 256 rod really just stiffens that up. You're going to find you get a straight shot from about here all the way down to the nose gear. You have to have a little bit of a bend here so it comes into that thing in a horizontal. Um, you know, you want to be parallel to the to this, you know, going this way as you come in there. And then the other modification I made, which really added a lot of authority to the, the uh, water rudder, was I put a 256 rod here. Again, I have one of these great planes connectors here, but you could just use a regular um, clevis, you know, like uh, one of these there. It's fine. I just find these great planes a little bit easier to make adjustments to. And I ran the 256 rod along down here. I'm on the outside of the control, or the uh, uh, um, landing gear down strut here. I'm on the outside of it. Got a little bit of a piece of plastic there and a little tie wrap just to tie it into the down the landing gear uh, down uh, tube there. And then I pop this little guide here off and put it here. And what I want to do is I want it to come straight along here and come straight into this control horn. Put a little bit of, bit of a bend right here. You can sight all this in. If you bend the 256 in the wrong area, just straighten it out and make another bend to it. And then what I did was I took a piece of wire and heated up in a candle and made a hole as close as I could get towards the center line or the center point of this control rod because that's going to give me the maximum amount of throw um, this way. Uh, so I'm going to have the maximum amount of rudder movement there. Now, another thing that I did too, which I don't think is necessary, because I think once you move this hole in as tight as you can get it here, that's where all your authority is going to come from. I did go to the outside last position of the control horn here for the rudder, and then the second position in for the nose gear and the water rudder. I don't know if you need to be in the second in the second position in. I think the uh, manual says they use the third position in. Um, you could probably go stay in that third position and have almost all of this movement in the rudder. You're going to see that I have in a moment. And they, let me turn the uh, turn it on here. Show you how much rudder movement this setup gives you. Okay, I'll shoot it from above so you got a good, a pretty good look at it. You can control, you can compare that to your amount of movement you're getting off the uh, standard setup. We got a little buzz in here, I think that's what that's from 
Now, in terms of uh, keeping water from getting in the cavity, there's a couple of suggestions I'd make. Uh, and the reason I can make the suggestions is I was trying to fly it for the first time in a little bit of wind today, and uh, I noticed it over twice, and the water had got it upside down. If it does get upside down, the wing will um, be in the water, and the uh, tip of the floats will be in the water, and the rest is going to be pretty much out of the water. Anyway, what I would suggest is using uh, at least six rubber bands, you know, probably three crisscross here, three crisscross here. You want that wing as tight as you can get here so none of the water gets in, almost, you know, make kind of a seal here. So, you know, use more rubber bands than you might use if you're going to be flying the thing on wheels. And then, um, I do think the manual suggests eight rubber bands, and I could say that would not be too many to use if you're flying in water. And then the other thing I did, based on some suggestions, uh, that are on the internet is um, I just used some packing tape on the battery door got this all nice and sealed up battery door is kind of in rough shape and, um, and then I also put some uh, packing tape on the inside of this and then tape that. I didn't tape all the way along here. I don't think you need to. But I did put some uh, packing tape on the inside so it doesn't just wash off if it gets wet. And then put some packing tape here to hold that to make sure that stays in. But if you do that, um, you're going to find you're not going to get any water. And at least I found I could be uh, basically um, upside down and uh, turn it back over. And it was fine. Two times that it went out there, it was still trying to right itself. The safe system was still running. And uh, I just turned the plane over, took the wing off, let uh, just in case there was any water in it, let it dry out for 15 minutes, and it, everything seemed to be fine. I didn't find any moisture on the inside of the, of the uh, in here at all when I opened it up. So that stayed nice and dry, even the thing being turned over twice. So those are a couple suggestions that you might follow. Um, like I said, I'm not a modeler, and so those are fairly easy things that I did. Again, this is a 256 rod. It's going to come threaded on one end, so you can get a can get one of the plastic clevises like this to go on one end. And uh, these are made by Great Plains. Your hobby shop will have them. These little connectors. I do have some video of it on the water, taxing around as a test, and I will put that on the end here. Done. That's how much authority I have. The setup I have. Okay, so I'll do is I'll put it in the water and we'll show it in the water. It's how close, it's how tightly it turns. Now that's one way. And maybe P factor. So we'll go downwind a little bit and then we'll go the other way. And that's the other way. So it does a complete circle in about maybe 12 feet. And we'll go the other way. Now there's a little bit of a tailwind, so it's not going to turn as well this way until it gets past. Now it's going to turn better. Let us weather, let it weather vane into the wind, which it's going to do nicely like that. And then I'm going to just have full back. Full back elevator. 
and try and get it off the water as quickly as I can. Let's just see if it'll taxi here. Seems to be taxiing fine. Here we go. Here we go. There, it seems to be on a stable approach. Still too fast. Uh, a little splashy, but that's not bad for a first attempt. Got all that rudder. Bring it around. Okay, look, I'm ready to go here. Full back elevator, Let's see how it tracks. Seems to be tracking fine. Oh, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> 